small, tiny speck of dust that is in thy brother's eye, but does not consider not the beam, the big log, that is in thy own eyes. Now I say people bring insecurity into conflicts, and I've seen this time and time and time and over. I have seen there are both men and women in every situation. Women who are so insecure, or men who are so insecure in this relationship, in this marriage, in this family, that they have to fear what the man does all the time, or what the woman does all the time. They are so insecure that they always think my husband is cheating with every woman he smiles to or looked at or talked to. He eats and eats and it is like a deep, deep, deep agonizing pain that endures. I've seen men who cannot allow their wife practically to go anywhere because of her uh, is going. I ask, is there any reason for this? Has she given you any reason for this? No. Well, not really. But you are afraid insecurity is in this person so much that, like in case of an Ethiopian lady, the husband has to follow her to interview. I thought was just driving the first time. Then I time somebody will follow the wife to walk. <laughs> Not kidding you. Drop her and pick her off too. Not because he wants to do that, but because he wants to monitor and find out where you are going every second of the day. I, I, I say, is there a reason for this? I mean, has it, something happened that, no, no, no. It is insecurity. I've seen women who are so jealous and bitter of, uh, of this thing that they, 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 they don't trust their men. And this brings conflict in the home. There's really no reason for you to think that because it maybe happened one time or so whatever, or does never happen, that you have to dwell in this. People come into conflicts with baggage, excess baggage. That derails everything. Some come into conflict with bitterness. That's why I say, examine yourself and see where you fit in. If there's anything you are bringing into this conflict, then it is hard for that conflict to be resolved unless you take the steps to first remove the speck from your own eyes so that you can see clearly to remove the log or the beam in your husband's or your wife's eyes. They bring bitterness into this conflict. Well, he did it like 20 years ago. This one, I'm telling you, is between two great people that I know. On the marriage night of 20-something years ago, there's an issue. I was surprised. Have you guys discussed this before? And this has created this conflict that continues for this year still now. Yes. Why didn't you tell him this wrong? He did. Well, he should know. He did it. And wasn't it so? I said, my God. How immature we can be mature and be immature. Because these are mature Christians. So it created a root of bitterness that have endured for years. That could even be pulled up at the first day and pulled out, root and all. But you allow it to be there because of what? Immaturity. Then bitterness will create resentment. Resentment that will be there and there and simmering like a Soup, pot of soup in a fire, only getting higher and higher, warmer and warmer, until it bursts out one day. 
So you have to ask yourself, what am I bringing into this, or have brought into this conflict? I see some people with inflexibility. They are not flexible. They are so rigid that it will have to take God to slap them. Times even when they slap them, they don't even know. They don't recognize God is slapping you. You boot them also, they will not recognize it. Times they just find out when they are about to be killed. And God in his mercy, they realize it. They are inflexible. They are so rigid. They, 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 they are almost superhuman in, in, in their rigidity. Well, he did it before. Something he did so many times. And so before he did it. And then there's a conflict. And you are thinking that that conflict is going to be resolved when you are not ready to bend. Some people are unbendable. And that's not the nature or the spirit of love of Christ. We have to be able to bend when it is necessary. We have to be able to reconfigure our mind to do our best to purge it of that evil that is residing there. So that the spirit of God can come and work his wonders in that situation. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. I've seen people bring vengeful spirits into conflict. It's outright demonic spirits that I'm seeing. Because the vengeance is not of the Lord. They are doing it to get their own way, push the burden to make the other person suffer. But when you are doing that, you are also suffering. Especially when it is in the same family of husband and wife. So you are not winning anything. You are not doing anything good. It's not, there's no benefit in what this vengeful spirit is. And this is the one that I noticed in this vengeful spirit. People start to hoard resources. Start to hoard affection. I'll give you an example. Sorry, I have to be explicit. A man that is providing in the family, maybe the wife is going to school and there's a conflict, he cut it off. And start to provide resources in such a meager way that the woman will feel the pain. So finally, after donkey years, the woman graduated as a nurse. Now her money is bigger than the man's own now with her iron job. And she pulled the plug also on her own end. Who started it? And they said the man, yes. The vengeful spirit we meant to make you to hurt others, to really make them feel the pain of living. In fact, the more they suffer, the happier you are, according to your own opinion. But that is not the spirit of God. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I have seen women who take this vengeful spirit to the extreme. No sexual relationship for two and a half years or three years. As you guys sleep on the same bed, yes. Sorry, children are here, but these are facts of life. You can close your ear if you don't want to hear. So this happens because you want to avenge on your husband, and then maybe the husband cannot contain their desire and goes out to have an affair and then bring another baggage into the issue. Tell me how did that help? Why don't you bury these excess luggages and figure a way to resolve it before it goes to a stage that is practically incurable? Now, God wants us to learn from this 
That's why I say we're going to break it down to simple levels we can understand. When you carry excess baggage to a conflict, you will not get resolution. If you get resolution, it will not be enduring, it will not be permanent, it will disrupt again. You have to be able to ask yourself, what is my part? It takes two to tango, brethren. You see this tango dance they do? It takes two. So when there's conflict, don't ever think that one person is responsible, 100%. I can look at every conflict that has been brought to me and tell the person, either by the grace of God in my life, by revelation, or pure knowledge, that this thing, you have a part in it. I was speaking to one, two couple, right in my office there, say, how can you say that I have part in this? I say, you do. Going back to where you have the part. There are certain things that is sealed, and when that thing is corrupted inside, there has to be a tiny opening, a pinprick opening that has opened that seal for foreign things to come in. So you have to realize, brethren, that you have to have a part. I don't care how holy you are. I don't care whatever. Just a part. Either you didn't listen. Either you didn't act fast. Either you over, over, over acted. And one thing or the other, there has to be a part you have. If you own that up, then there is hope for resolution. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Then, for, be tactful in speaking. Tactful. Speaking the truth in love. It's another area that I've seen many of us hear. Hell, I spoke it like it is. I say it like it is. Only like, like the way you are speaking it, you are throwing a nuclear bomb into the issue. You are pouring fuel into the fire because you are not speaking the truth in love. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Ephesians chapter 4, verse 15. Ephesians 4, verse 15. <clears throat> but brethren, speaking the truth in what love may grow up into him in all things which is the head, even Christ. I see this speaking as it is mostly among people who consider themselves very spiritual, who consider themselves I am mighty or up there in the Lord. They have gotten to close association with God to the extent that whatever comes out of their mouth is an oracle. They are not an oracle of God. So they don't measure their word. And so they speak and their word only kills and does not bring life. So no matter how you think, elevated or not, measure your word. Think through it before you speak. See, ask yourself, am I speaking in love? Does what I'm saying, though it is true, does what I'm saying, though it is real, a fact, how am I conveying it to the other person? Do I know their circumstances? Do I know their situation? Did I even care to find out what is their problem? Why they think doing this is okay? Why they think acting like this is okay? What, what's their perspective, experiences in life? I say to all the other time, if you can, make effort to find out the pain of others at times. You might have more compassion because there might be a lot in them that you don't know. You might be things that will just make your heart to melt, if only you know. But no, we jump up and say it as it is. We call it as it is. Only what we are saying is not life. We are speaking destruction and death through our mouth. Proverbs chapter 12, verse 18. Proverbs 12, 18. 
Therefore, there is that speaketh like the piercing of a sword. But the tongue of the wise is held. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So when you speak, let your word not be sword. Let it be life. Do not throw an atomic bomb with your mouth and expect to resolve conflict. And lastly, brethren, in 5, Colossians chapter 3, 13, the same thing I said the other day in Colossians 3, 13, you cannot achieve solution or resolve conflict without this. I remember telling us about the four stages that Bible have given us to resolve conflict. If Emmanuel did anything to you, that day I commended one sister who thought something, called me, and I was reasonable enough to listen and explain. He said, if somebody offend you, go talk to your brother first. That's what the Bible says. Amen? Talk to who? Talk to the person. Talk to the person first. If the person will not hear you, do what? Take somebody, a witness, maybe one or two, and go meet the person. If they will still not hear you, then bring it to the church. Let the church be the judge. And say if they still will not hear even you, the witness, the church, then you can consider the person to be a Republican, which is a tax collector, a very hated person in the Jewish religion. But I want to say this morning that you can also be like Christ. You don't have to consider that person a Republican. You can still stop at the third level and hand it over to the Lord without taking out your right of considering your wife or your husband or your friend or your brother a Republican, a hated human being whom you can take to court Take to judge, do whatever, because now it is your right. You don't have to go there. Jesus Christ, whom we try to emulate, what did he do? The very person that killed him, he ate with him on the same table, Judas. Did you see him run away and say, I'm not going to eat with you? You just get out, you miserable. Even at that point, he was still showing how we should behave. His best friend denied him three good times. He didn't fly off the handle to cuss him off. He was still counseling Peter, even though he denied him. That's the example we should. So when we say that that is the standard, that standard, you don't have to abide by it, especially on that part four, that you can consider anything you don't like or have tried everything to win as your enemy. So in this Colossians 3 that it is said, forbearing one another, forgiving one another. Forbearing one another and forgiving one another. And seek to be of the same mind. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Forbearing means to put up with. Put up with. My God, put up with. In this world, when I have a right, put up with your crap, put up with your nonsense. Put up with you or whatever. Me, put up with it. Why would you think you are? I will deal with you as it comes. That is it. We don't put up with it. So we fly off the handle. Forgiving, letting it go. That is what Colossians is telling us. Forbearing one another. Forbearing means put up with one another and let it go whatever offense the other person have done. That is one key factor that we have to use to overcome conflict. It has to boil down to this. Paul was speaking to two women in Philippians chapter 4, verse 2, as we round up, Eurodas and Cynthia. Two of them were after one another truth in the church. The Bible didn't tell us what was happening. Whether it's a doctrinal issue, it couldn't be. I have a feeling maybe they are, they, 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 are, they are deciding the color of the curtain for the new church they build. Maybe something like that. And Cynthia or Eroda say the color has to be this color 
And the other one say, no, it has to be the other color. You know, you don't have the sense of design like me or the ability to figure things out. Why are you messing with these things? No. And the other one say, well, after all, my husband is the pastor. And so I have a right to tell what the decoration in this church should be. And the other one say, well, my husband is the one that finance this church. If not for my husband's money, do you think we will even build any of this? Therefore, I have the right to call the shot on the decoration of this church. This is among the brethren. Paul have to write them a letter and say, I beseech you, old S, and beseech you, Cynthia, I can't pronounce their name, that they be of the same mind. <laughs> See, I call it as it is. <laughs> I said it as it is. Eh? I don't know where that name comes from. <clears throat> but the fact here is said that they be of what? The same mind in the Lord. Let's stand on our feet, everybody. As we pray. Let us not indulge in mutual destruction, self-destruction, brethren. Let us not keep one another miserable. Let's follow the scriptures. And let us be aware that it is woe to those that cause others to stumble. And the Bible have admonished us not to seek things of our own. And let us know that the fruit of righteousness is sown in peace in those that make peace. Blessed be the name of the Lord. So there have to be conflicts. As long as you breach, there will be conflict in place of work, in your home, at times even with kids, at times even among brethren, Pastors, ministers, bosom friends. At the end of the day, it boils down to the same thing. The fruit of righteousness is sown in peace in those that make peace. And we are admonished to forbear, put up with, forgive, let go. And we don't have to go all the way to the fourth part of that conditions of making conflict, dissolving conflict. If you call somebody and say, okay, you reach out to them, take somebody and go, go back again with the church, you can still forgive them on the fourth part. You don't have to take them to be a Republican, a hated person. You can still love them and walk in wisdom. So, Father, I am asking in the name of Jesus, are there people in this church that is going through conflict in their life or in their home? Is there anybody here who is having issue and does not know how to resolve it? I pray that this admonition will give them a clue on how to go about it. And fact that they will be able to take it and run with it, and go home and call this person or ask this person to sit down as a concern. And our Father, you will bring peace to them in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. That we will not start to gossip about it to everybody. It's not the right way. Text it to everybody. It's not the right way. But to call the person and Father, you will give an opening for healing in their life. We come against the spirit of conflict in this, come, in this place in the mighty name of Jesus. Our Lord, the enemy will not sow seed of discord among us, brethren. Father, grant us wisdom to avoid even conflict. Grant us wisdom to contain it if it's already happening. 
I pray for every marriage that is here in this house that your peace will take over the marriages in the name of Jesus. That your peace will be in our family in the mighty name of Jesus. That the work of the enemy will not abide in Jesus' mighty name. That Lord Jehovah God, you grant us, Father, that nature of Christ in all things that we do. That the glory and the honor and the praise shall be to you and you alone, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Praise him if you can come up, please. <laughs> Shall we stand as we give offering to the name of the Lord? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Shall be on our feet, please. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. We give you glory, Lord, as we honor you. You are wonderful. You are worthy.
not. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Papa, please come and embrace this uh, offering. Papa Baliko. Step up and embrace the offering. Thank you. Yeah. You can come over here. Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks. Thank you for your word to our hearts today. Thank you for the privilege of rejoicing in your presence. Thank you for your blessings that have followed us all our lives. Thank you for the opportunity to give a little, a little of what you have blessed us with. Our Father, we pray that you receive our offerings, that it will be a blessing even to your church, a source of honor and glory to your work in this place. Thank you, Father, as we look unto further blessings. Let your name be lifted up. Let your name be glorified. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. I'm going to uh, read out a, a soul winner action team announcement. This is the evangelism arm of GMI Church. The purpose is to reach out with gospel, reconciling men, women, and children back to God. Meeting venue is SWAT office, that is on the other side of the building, adjacent to the banquet hall. And the meeting is, uh, you guys, they go out every, every uh, Saturday. Uh, members converge in the SWAT office. And then they move by 9.30 a.m. And they move promptly out by 10 a.m. to 11. So it's about one hour. Our needs. More members are needed to join the group to populate the kingdom of darkness and populate the kingdom of God. Say the joy that comes with soul winning is a reward. And our eternal reward by the Lord himself. So the request from the head of the team, which is Pastor John, in this all-important duty of soul winning is that the Lord will grant you grace to come and join and reach out to people in the community. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Another quick announcement is that on March 26th, the children, the kids, under Pastor Peter and Sister Grace and others will be having their usual, uh, I think, quarterly or ministration and we want us to remember that the same day we are going to have our GMI meet and greet who knows what meet and greet is that's when we meet and we greet one another <laughs> yes somebody because at times they go to minister in areas that they don't have they want to minister to everybody but there's a language barrier here some people speak Spanish and they cannot speak so if you know please volunteer yourself so you can interpret blessed be the name of the Lord so we have meet and greet on March 26th and we also have children activity after church we're going to go into the banquet hall by 12 30 p.m. for about one hour we have food we rejoice with one another we Talk. So that's an opportunity also to invite people uh, to come and meet and greet. There's an opportunity to sit down and eat and relax with one another. Let's stand on our feet as we share the grace. Any other announcement I'm forgetting? Is that to be anything? No. Right. Let's share the grace, please.
the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of our God, and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our life. We shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.